In this tutorial, we're going to see how we can leverage JavaScript to automate tasks in the browser. The example that we're going to be using is LinkedIn. So if you ever have a scenario where you have a bunch of buttons on a page and you want to go and you want to follow a bunch of users or you want to follow the case we're going to use is for hashtags. If you want to do that manually, that would be quite a bit of work, especially if you do it on a daily basis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can leverage JavaScript, build up a automation script that traverses the DOM, so it traverses the entire website, it picks out the elements that we're interested in, specifically buttons, and then it clicks them and it does it all in a split second to make the entire process much more efficient. I'll be following along in the comment section, so if you have any questions whatsoever about what's covered, please add the comment there and I'll do my best to get back to you quickly. And also, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe and I'll be able to keep on making more of them. So now let's walk through how we can automate tasks on LinkedIn. Now this is a very popular way of using JavaScript. So if you're wanting to build out your network, then this is a great way to do it in a very quick fashion. And so right here you can see I've gone to my network on LinkedIn and they give you all of these recommended items. Now you could also do this on a group page and I'm going to use the hashtag page for this. And the reason why I'm going to be doing that is because if I did it for all, it would send it to a bunch of people. And I am not 100% sure if I want to add all of these recommended people. However, I know there are a lot of people out there and developers out there who are trying to build out their network and they simply want to run through and add a bunch of connections. So that's perfectly fine, but I'm going to show you how to follow a bunch of hashtags. The process is completely identical, and I know that because I ran a small test before filming this, and it did send out the connect messages and the connect invitations out to everybody. So this will work for people, for all, or for hashtags. So I'm going to switch over to hashtags and we can walk through exactly how this works. So I'm going to right click on follow and inspect. Now this is going to give me the actual text because that's what I selected, but we need to move a little bit up further in the DOM. So right here you can see that we have the button. So this button element is actually what we're looking for. So here in the button, this is going to be relatively straightforward because we have a class that we can grab. So all I have to do is grab this MN discovery hashtag card action button. It's a nice long name. Hit copy and then come to the console. Now right here, let me clear out any errors that we had. So right here, let's run a test and make sure that we have access to everything that we think we have access to. So I'm gonna say let, and then I'm gonna declare a variable here. So I'll say hashtag buttons document dot query selector all, because we wanna grab all of these elements. And then I'm going to paste in that class name. So now what I can do is just run the selector. And now if I look for hashtag buttons, you can see it brings up all of the, uh, all of the specific follow buttons that we have right here. So if I wanted to check out the length, I can see I have 32 of those. So now what we can do is we can just automate the process of following all of those hashtags. So here, I can say hashtags or hashtag buttons and then for each for each in JavaScript takes a function. So I'm just going to say button use an arrow function and then say button dot click. So this is the click function that is available in JavaScript. And now if I run that, you can see that it went and it followed every one of those hashtags. So now if I hit refresh on this page, you can see that I'm now following each one of the hashtags. So every one of those that was on there, I am now following. 
Now you could do the exact same thing here, and I'm going to. So I want to show you both sides of it. So I showed you how you could do it for following. Now, if you want to unfollow, say, all of these different elements, let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to click inspect here. And so now you have this actor follow toggle. This is a control name. Then the class you have follows recommendation card follow button. So this is what we're looking for is this class right here. And I'm going to copy this. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to say, con and this time, it doesn't matter if you use const let or var for the variable, but I'm not going to change it. So I'm going to say const and then following buttons document dot query selector all run that. And now if I check to see all of those following buttons, you can see them right there. And now I can run the exact same process. So I can say for each, and then we'll just say follow button singular, go with a arrow function here, and then say follow button singular dot click and run this. And let's see, it says following button. Oh, it's follow button. That helped to spell it correctly. And now you can see it went and it unfollowed each one of those hashtags. So with just writing a single line of code, we we're able to follow all of those hashtags on the page and then writing another very similar line of code, we're able to go and unfollow those. So if that is something that you're looking to do where you're trying to build your network or, and that's specific to LinkedIn, but these processes that I just walked through, this could be applied to any kind of page. So you could do this for Instagram. You could do it for Facebook. You could do it for anything that you want to automate. The reason, the thing that gave me this idea was the Bottega Code School CEO asked if I could help him build a script because he was trying to automate the process of going and following a bunch of people in some of these LinkedIn groups. And so that's what gave me the idea to do that, because I assume that if he asked for that, other people were looking to automate the same process. And now you know how to. And as you can see, it's relatively straightforward. Remember, any type of script like this has two main steps. It first has the query step. So that is where you go and you find what the class name is you're looking for, and then you query it and you store that value in a variable. Then from there, the second step is to perform the process. So in this case, the process was simply clicking on the button. The process could be anything else. So it could involve other steps if you need to, say, fill out form elements and then click or whatever it is that you need to do. As long as you have that element selected, when you have for each and you have the method like this, what you're able to do is treat each element as if it was you who was going and you were clicking or you were filling out a form or whatever process you're looking to do. And you can simply have the code do it. That's what this is all about, is being able to automate the entire process using JavaScript. So great job. You now know how to fully automate any kind of process that you need to do inside of a browser.